Got room for one more. Yeah, I'll hang out for a little bit, then I'm probably going to check out, because it is pretty hot in here tonight. Maybe go over to team mm, okay, speak. Hi, guys. Is this Kevin? Yes, it's Kevin. Hey, Kevin, good to meet you. Good to have you on. Hi, Okay, guys, well, let's... uh. Let's start out here and uh, have everybody introduce themselves. We've got uh, Rich here from the Captain's Ready Room. Rich, you want to introduce yourself and talk about what you're working on? Sure. Um, uh, like I said, my name's Rich. Um, I'm out of Pittsburgh, actually. And um, I'm working on the uh, K7 station. Um, it's a doozy, a lot of seam problems. So I'm just kind of going around and getting rid of some of the the seams, trying to sand some stuff down and, and uh, get it ready to roll for some glue. I'm hoping by the end of the weekend to be able to get it reprimed and fixed up. So that's pretty much what I'm doing now. <laughs> awesome, Rich. Mm -hmm. Are you lighting the kit or are you just building it right out of the box? Uh, you know what? I'm building it right out of the box. So my talent isn't yet with lighting. Uh, I'm hoping to get there one of these days. Um, kind of press for time these past couple months, so I figured I'd pick something like this. Just I thought it would be a little more simpler, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's, it's, the seams are killing me. So <laughs> Yeah. Those old kits are pretty, pretty bad for that. Yeah. Well, well, that's, a really, that's a really fun kit to work on anyway. Yeah, it's a really it popular kit. Yeah, it's, it's a shame it's so inaccurate. Yeah, it's, I, I'm, I'm sad it's so inaccurate, but it's definitely worth it. I mean, I'm having a good time with it, so... <laughs> Yeah, well, it's a good likeness of it. I mean, it's not exactly perfect, but it's a good likeness. That's been around for, what, about 40 years or so? I think that's what I read. Yeah, it's one of the old ones um, that they repop. So, and I, you know, I, it'll look good. I got the, um, you know, the 350 original Enterprise, so I figured I'll set it near it on the, on the, on the dresser that I have. And uh, so it'll look nice there, I think, so. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for sharing that, Rich. Sure. Uh, looks like up next we've got... Uh, Scratch and Jack. Welcome back again, Jack. How you doing? I just had to turn my mic on. I just don't want to be making noise in the room unnecessarily. What am I working on? What you working on, Jack? He's always working on something. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, he's Jack, got the Voyager. What are you today? Yes, I'm debating. I'm sitting <laughs> here uh, debating on what to do next. Um, i seen Steve Neal's uh, video on his build, and... Um, Quite frankly, I can't see putting in windows and the masking them off on this assembly. But I think I am going to have to because these openings are too big. Uh, okay. So that's what I'm working. I've been working very diligently for the past two days on this, and I'm ready for lighting and windows and painting and everything else. <laughs> well, hold that hold that saucer up for us, Jack. You can see it. With the light going shining through the windows, there, you can everybody can see you've been cutting out all the windows on that. Oh, thing. I've been cutting the windows. Nice. Wow. But I Very have to nice. mask them off. Once I put the windows in, I have to mask them off to make them even smaller. That is nice. So. Looks looks really good, Jack. Uh, tell everybody what kit that is. Is that Monogram or the Ravel or which one is it? This is the Ravel. This is the okay, Ravel. Okay, Ravel Germany? No, no. This is the Ravel from, oh gosh, well, who knows how long ago that was. Uh, uh, back in the 90s. Uh, what? What? Just been buying them up on eBay, and uh, okay. Put some photo etch on this too, and uh, up here on the roof of the bridge, you have to grind it off and reapply the pattern. It's like putting a jigsaw puzzle back together again, taking it off. That's right up here. I don't know if it can see it. Yeah, it's a little bit hard to see in the light there, but I get the idea. What uh, what type of aftermarket photo etch parts are you using, Jack? Who makes this is those? Paragraphics. Paragraphics, okay. Well, paragraphics. I'm sorry. Paragraphics. JT graphics. Paragraphics. Okay. Get them mixed up all the time. And awesome. uh, I tried the Elmer's glue for Windows, and it didn't. I don't know. After like three hours of drying, it didn't do too well. So I'm using this. Um, it's okay, but quite frankly, I, I, I'd rather spring for uh, dental acrylic, but um, so far, so good. It says it dries clear, but I put it on a couple of test windows. It's not very clear, but it's only been okay. about two hours. Maybe it just needs a night. 
Oh, have you have any awesome. experience with this? Say that again? Do you have any experience with this? I can't really see what it is, Jack. It's kind of blurry. It's Tester's uh, Clear Part Cement and Window Maker. Oh no, I haven't used that, but I've heard it. I've heard it talked about before. Does yeah. that uh, take a, take a little while to set up, or what? What's your technique? Are you yeah, before you put those in apply it? Well, uh, sort of just applying it the way you apply. Uh, uh, what is it? The what is it you use? I apply it the same way. Canopy glue or canopy micro glue, crystal yeah. clear? Yes, okay. I'm applying it like canopy glue. Um, but apparently, it might have. It says it dries clear, but it's. Pretty opaque. Maybe it's too thick. I don't know. I don't know. So I don't. I don't. I'm. I'm trying to figure this out before I really move on and putting things together. Um, if anybody has any suggestions uh, to make windows other than canopy glue? Maybe I have to buy canopy glue. <laughs> but uh, boy, now when you use the canopy glue, how thick can the canopy glue be and be pretty clear? At the same time, um, well, you can go you can go pretty thick with it. Um, it just kind of you know I mean it, it kind of has to naturally lay in there. You really you really can't control the uh, you know how thick it is. Uh, you just basically what I do is I use that little syringe and fill the windows up and uh, you know just kind of let it. Sometimes you have to go over it a couple of times because it'll it'll drip on the inside and it won't hold. You know what I mean? And right. And once you get a pretty good bead in there, you just take a damp cloth and wipe it off. It's a little hard to control how thick it is, but well, um, I prefer. Well, you do that last before when you do uh, the decals, don't you? Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. That's pretty much the last thing I'll do when I get done sealing everything up. You know and. Yeah, but you uh, see, these windows need to be smaller. I have to mask them off. The windows have to be in there. Yeah, because they have they're smaller. These are these are these are pretty big. Uh huh. Um, well, yeah, the, you know, you can you can test it on a, a couple of things, Jack. You might, you know, like for example, like on the 350 refit, like the Arboretum windows, that would probably be a little bit too big for the canopy glue. Right. Sure. It won't. It won't hold. But I mean. Small to medium-sized window ports, it, it should do the job. You just have to test around and mess with it a little bit. Yeah, I suppose. All right, that's all. Look, that. <laughs> what? That's that's looking good, man. Oh, Thanks for showing it. that. And what scale was that again, Jack? What scale was that? Um, um, I looked it up. I think it's six thirty-seven, something really weird like that. Okay. Um, it doesn't have a scale on the uh, bar. Um, not that I have it handy, but I didn't see any scale in the box. But when I went looking for decals, um, it was JT Graphics that had them, and I think they put it at the uh, 637 scale. Okay. So uh, it's actually a pretty big model. In fact, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to put a solenoid inside the uh, model and activate it. It's going to flip the nacelles up. Oh, wow. It's motorizing the cells. Oh, that'll really cool. be cool. Semi-automatic to sell. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to that. Yeah, you'll have to share with everybody how you get that to work. I know a lot of people like to do that, too. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I got it figured out, but now I just got to build it. So. Hmm. Okay. That's it. Sounds good. All right, up next we got Richard Cleveland from the Great White North. Coo -coo 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 -coo. <laughs> Richard, what do you got for tonight, buddy? I am working on my 1/350th Toss Enterprise. Currently, I am making a sun. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that in a couple war movies, I think. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I wanted to give it a new flavor. Tora, Tora, Tora comes to mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm filling in grid lines um, to be more to the studio scale model. Um, I've already started with the paint job. Let me see if I can go and grab a quick piece here behind me. Um, you got, most of you guys probably haven't seen the paint job I did today, so I'll just go grab a quick piece. So here's the... Uh, the secondary hull that I've been working on. 
And it's hey, got it its first good. it's got its first coat of the green gray paint or the Japanese navy gray as they call it. And uh, this is just pressure fit together. It's not glued up yet, but uh, it's it came out just a little bit textured. It's not as smooth as I'd like it to be, but uh, I'll give it a 800 grit sanding. I'll give it another coat. Give it another 800 grit sanding. Then she'll be ready to put together. Okay, and that's a that's a good uh, tip or tech to share with everybody about you know if you get a little texture on there, you can always can always sand that down and hit it with another coat. I usually put two or three coats of primer on, uh, and I wet sand between them, and then I also do that with my uh, my my paint colors too. It's all wet sand between each coat of paint. Very nice. Now, how are you finding the fit of the model so far? It sucks. Yeah. Um, mine has been plagued with warp problems right from the beginning. Um, my nacelles didn't go together worth a damn, and uh, I I really had to clamp them up to get them to uh, to sit properly, and then let them dry for a good couple of days before I went back and started playing around with them. Okay. Well, that's good info. So you can expect to do a little putty work with that model kit then. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Now I've built a couple of those, and I've had varying degrees of quality of mold. Most of them have been pretty good, but yeah, a little bit on the nacelles, and I think once in a while I've seen a few dimples in the uh, mold on the secondary hull where they look just like kind of little ripples in the surface, right. but they're a little block sanding, a little putty will straighten that right out. So what's your plans going forward with that? What's your next step after you get the uh, Once I get the, the grid all filled painted? in, yeah, once I get the grid all filled in, um, it'll get a wet sanding so that it comes out smooth, and then uh, it'll get another shot of primer to cover up all the all the grid, uh, and then I'll shoot color on it and uh, start the assembly. It's what I'm trying to achieve with this is very much uh, like the studio model, not what we saw on the screen, but trying to get it as accurately as I can to the studio version of the, of the 11 foot. Very cool. And are you using any any uh, particular reference material or anything, Richard, that you can tell uh, people yeah, where to actually, look? Or? Yeah, well, not a book. I'm using a lot of the restoration photos um, that I I was able to find online. So that was a that was a definite positive for me. Um, okay. And then whatever other photos I have. Oh, okay. Well, I think that's a good tip to point out to modelers is that uh, you can look up a lot of that stuff. Oh, the old Starfleet assembly manuals. Yeah, that's been around for a while. The great, and, it's uh, a great little book. Who's that one written by again, Richard? That's written by Paul M. Newitt, who spent uh, quite a bit of time talking to the guys who uh, actually built the original studio model. and uh, He went through a lot of painstaking research to get the the exact color of the model as it was on the production stage uh, for seasons one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I know there's a lot of debate about the color of the ship and everything, but uh, there's a lot of information out there. and That is a good tip to point out to all the modelers out there is you can find a lot of reference material online about all this stuff, so it's a good resource. Well, the color of the model has been debated endlessly, as we all know, and uh, Paul knew it. I think is probably the the best source for color of this model. Um, uh -huh. Most guys will paint it gray, much like you've done in a lot in the past, because you don't like the green color, um, mm -hmm. which is fine. I mean, that's it's to each his own choice, right? Um, so yeah, it's everybody's eye interpreting. Yeah, everybody saw the, yeah, everybody saw the shoot differently. The yeah, you're going with what pictures of the studio model look like versus what what it looked like on the screen, you know, and they, I mean, there's a lot of different different filters and things that they use when they shot the film and everything, and lighting has a lot to do with it, so, but whatever makes you happy. Well, you know, the weirdest thing was, is I took some pictures of it today, as you as you well know, and the close-up pictures I took of the connecting dorsal came out that gray-green. Uh-huh. But when I did a shot of all the parts on the table, they look gray, almost white. 
Mm-hmm. And it's under the same lighting. I was just a little further away. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Thanks, Richard. Well, up hey, next Richard. we have uh, we have Mark Schuler. And Mark, yeah. what are you working on tonight? Wow, the old classic 650 kit. Oh, yeah. Good to see people working on those. Red lines and all. Oh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> One of my favorites. Uh -huh. Yeah, right now, though, I'm putting in the three little holes, the divots on the bottom. I don't know what they were uh -huh. for. Uh, I'm putting I don't down. think anybody does. <laughs> and I'm cutting the windows. Very nice. I'm put lights in it. Excellent. Have you made up your own lighting kit, Mark, or are you uh, using some aftermarket kind of kit to I'm, light it? I'm a little of both. I have a tenant control um, cell lighting. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, for the uh, spinning bizarre effect? Yep, for the spinning bizarre. I got the bizarre from uh, yeah. BLM. Don's Light and Magic, okay. Yeah, Don's Light and Magic, yeah. And um, the rest of it, pretty much just, I'm just going to do some uh, first time use of the lighting strip. Wow, okay. So if there's any suggestions on using that, <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to hear them. Okay, for the, for, the, for the, for the LED, yeah, yeah, for the LED strip. Yeah. They're pr well, Mark. I've they're pretty straightforward as far as uh, as far as using them. The the voltage will they'll run from anywhere from about what seven to twelve volts DC, and you just hook okay. your positive negative uh, right up to them. You know, solder onto them and connect them directly to your power source, and away you go. They're already okay. pre-resistored and everything, so you don't have to worry about resistors on them. All right, that's, that's why I like it. <laughs> I have a problem with the the math. It's never right. On the resistors. Yeah. Has anybody used these before? Okay, the snap the connectors. connectors. Yeah. Yeah. I can say I'm not really a big fan of those, uh, Mark, because I worry about them coming loose later. I prefer to solder everything. But other guys may have used them and had a lot of luck with them. I'm not sure, but I, I'm not a big fan of them myself. Well, Boyd, I've used those, and. Um... I used them when I was building the toss on the saucer, and you can't depend upon those things to stay connected. Because oh, yeah? just handling the model, they will work themselves loose. And I used um, low temp hot glue to keep them keep the connectors in place because they will come loose re relatively easy. Hey. So yeah, that's, uh, I strongly that's, recommend that yeah. you. Um, you really well after you get them plugged in and working. You you immobilize them with some type of adhesive of some sort to uh, lock them down so they can't pop off. Because the worst thing that would happen because that if you put them all together and you closed up your model and you're just handling it and whatever and, and then they came loose, you would be pretty much devastated. So yeah, yeah, together, bad thing to have happen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now. Mark, you were saying something about not figuring out uh, what resistors to go with your right. LEDs I, or something. Right. I don't know. Which, you know what would be the best. I can't. I'm not good with math. Okay. Please. Well, just as a just as a general rule of thumb, uh, doing a lot of this lighting and stuff, and maybe you other guys can chime in on this, but I found that the uh, uh, one quarter watt 470 ohm resistor works in almost every application with LEDs. There are are a few LEDs out there that require special resistors with them, different impedances, but the 470 one quarter watt will work with everything from like 7 to 12 volts DC with no problem. Okay. And that'll keep the that'll keep the LED like kind of right in its middle range where it's not going to light too dim and it's not going to light too bright. Yeah. You should be able to get away with that in most cases. I would have to agree with uh, Boyd, but there is a website uh, that you can go on and punch in the numbers and it'll tell you which LED to, um, okay. to use. Um, it's a very popular site. Uh, I will copy it to uh, the address and put it in the chat box. Okay. I appreciate that. 
Um, yeah, just punch in the numbers. It'll give you specifically what uh, LED and how many LEDs that would need for a resistor and the voltage you're using. Uh, but um, Boyd is right. Um, you can probably just put a, a what a three twenty four forty four seventy um, depending. You know. Um, yeah, the four seventy. The the one you want to make sure that you want to make sure that the uh, that the wattage rating is correct on it. Though you want to you want to go with a quarter watt and right around four seventy or so. That's a fairly common resistor. Most places that carry resistors will have that one. A quarter watt resistor and probably operate as much as. 10 LED. Uh, so 500 uh, milliwatts and a LED typically uh, consumes about 20. So, you know, right there you have to uh, do my math, whatever. It's about 10. Uh, it's okay. a safe bet. But you do need one resistor for one LED. You cannot, you should not use uh, one resistor for many LEDs. Right. Um, so each, each LED good idea to put a resistor on every LED that you hook up. Yes. All right. One LED, one resistor. That's the rule. Cool. Oh, I've done enough wiring to, <laughs> to uh, have triumph and disappointment with it. So. <laughs> well, I'm 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 getting back into modeling after about fifteen years, and uh, I never put lights in them. Oh, LEDs are really cheap. And it's a whole new world, Mark, and it adds a whole new level of having fun with building these things when you do the lighting on them. And oh, yeah. These That's Starship models, it really, yeah, it, it's really fun when you plan out the whole system and when you get to see it when it's all done with the lights on. It's awesome. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Looking forward Indeed. to seeing more progress on that one. Oh, yeah, I started, started a new web uh, YouTube site That's just for this one. Very cool. Well, see what happens. All righty. Well, up next, we got Jerry here. And Jerry's usually always busy working on something like he is tonight. And I think he's working on a Katinga cruiser there, if I can see it. Oh, you're That's absolutely correct. I'm finally decided to take it off of mo out of mothballs and get all the detail painting done. And I've discovered something about your paint, Boyd. Instead of just using it in the airbrush, it works wonderfully brushing it on with a, with a oh. brush work. Well, good. Good. In fact, I've discovered a little technique to how to put it down and get no brush get no brush marks at all, which I'm really pleased with. Because I awesome. decided this, this after, late this afternoon that I was going to try this because I was just in no mood to sit here and mask off a bazillion little feather panels on this Katinga. <laughs> but because of the reducer yeah. that you've put in it, uh, if you put a little extra paint out on it so it puddles just slightly, it'll level itself out and the reducer evaporates quite nicely and it goes perfectly flat and there's no brush marks. Very nice. Well, so tell I'm us a little bit about that model, impressed. Jerry. I know you've been working on it for a while. What, have you, what all have you done to it? I know you've modified it and used some aftermarket parts. I've got a, I've got some of the JT graphics aftermarket parts, uh, the, the same ones that that you used on your recent build, and I've got fiber optics in it um, as well. I have one of those wonderful little um, vellum uh, five dollar little flasher boards that I modified that I put in here to run the um, two nav or red blinking lights that are on this model. Um, I don't have any sound effects or anything in it, but I've got uh, decided to go ahead and light up the torp tubes and keep them lit and um, the engines, the impulse engines and everything. And uh, I got all the lights that's on the studio model on here except those two that you know I forgot about, Boyd, that I didn't see <laughs> after she was closed up on the, um, on the underside on the um, weapons pods. But all the other ones are here, so she's almost finished. I, I'm going to be printing some new decals for it. This is not the repop. This is the the original, um, what 1980, 1979 uh, release. All right. Um, so I've almost got it finished. I also got the little grills on it for from JT Graphics for the little photo etch pieces. 
Yes, so, little nice parts, really nice parts. Yes, they are. I highly recommend all the JT graphics stuff if anybody wants to build a nice, or at least improve the accuracy of that model. He's got some great parts for that kit. Especially the, um, you got to have the, the corrected onion bulb at the front and bridge deck and everything. Because that, right. that, on, that on the model kit is just way off from what the studio model uh, ended up being. You've got the option there to do the uh, Katinga and the. they also op uh, offer a Konus 1 bridge set up for that too as well. That is correct. Very nice. Well, I wanted to mention too that Jerry has a, a, a nice YouTube channel out there too, guys. If you haven't seen it, Jerry has, does a lot of... Uh, uh, offers a lot of pointers and tips and tricks for model building on his channel too. So, if you haven't been there, stop by and check that out. He's always got some fantastic stuff. He's just done a recent uh, out of the box review on the De Boer's, uh large scale Reliant kit, which is just awesome to see. If you guys haven't ever seen that one, and hopefully in a couple of weeks I'll be having the the refit. Oh yeah, really excited about that one too. Awesome. Hot off the mold, too. Brand new mold. All right. Well, thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Boyd. Up next, we have Heath here. Heath is from the land down under. Good night. Glad to have you with us tonight, Heath. Thank you, Boyd. Thank you. Must admit, I've been looking at your JJ Enterprise, and I must admit, very, very, I'm liking it much. Very well, good. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Recent subscriber, I've been for about a couple of months. I know that anybody like there was anybody like me out there who did Star Trek models. Well, boy, <laughs> am I glad I did. Boy, am I glad I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you working on there, Heath? I'm working on. I've just recently tried to do a clear, clear blue on the Selected dish of the uh, Enterprise refit. Okay. And it doesn't seem to be working. It doesn't seem to be working at all. So, but the thing is, I got a light blue, and I remember seeing it on Star Trek Two. I think it was a what the deflected dish was a light blue when she first. No, hang on, before she left. No, after she left the space dock before she went into war. It was like a light blue. But I can't, don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on that. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen Star Trek 2 in years. <laughs> <laughs> so you, that is the uh, 1 1,000 scale uh, polar lights kit you're, you're working on, Heath? Yep, the 1 1,000 scale. It's a lot like the uh, TOS one. It's a lot like here. Same. Which oh, that that's that kit includes all the Aztec decals with it, right? I'm not looking forward to doing that. I'm not looking forward to doing that. <laughs> not at all. I'm going to do a three little measure and measure, and measure comparison, style of comparison here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I've been having a lot of discussions with a lot of my Trek they're saying that the re re refit version of the Enterprise was bigger than the original. And I hate to say it, but I think they're correct. Because I'm going to look here and I'm going, yep, damn be hell, they're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great model kit for the money. I mean, here in the U.S., that kit runs around a little over $20. I mean, I think that's a heck of a buy on a model oh, yeah. where you get all the... Uh, it's it's fairly accurate. It's a fairly nice scale, and you get the Aztec decals with it. So that's a nice kit for somebody who's looking to, uh, uh, you know, an, a, for an affordable version of the Enterprise refit to build. Well, I bought mine on eBay. Of course, at the time, the bought it, uh, the dollar was pretty good, so I got it for, uh, and that's the I got it that's for the. In, I've just got some instructions at the back here, and it looks like um, the attacking is going to be like, I'm going to be like, oh, what have I done? Done. <laughs> the 
Well, I know okay. around. I know around here a couple of our guys, uh, Heath, uh, uh, Jerry, and a few others. They've been they've been working on doing some incredible lighting work on those models. There's uh, there's photo parts available for that model from Paragraphics. Oh yeah. Uh, for the uh, shuttle bay and uh, the arboretums and a few other things, and they've been doing some fantastic work. In fact, I think Jerry there has worked out a little uh, a decal for the inside of the shuttle bay that gives you a uh, sort of a forced perspective look that makes the shuttle bay look a lot deeper than it is. It's really fascinating. Nice, nice stuff. I mean, if I, if I knew it had to do one next, I would fight sucker. I don't. I don't know, don't know about like All I know is, is how to put them together and then display them. That's it. All I, that is, well, there's okay. nothing wrong with that either. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, yeah. I'm thinking. You know, I think I, I think there's also a uh, paragraphics photo set, so you can do the battle damage version of the Enterprise too, from the Wrath of Khan. Yes, sir, uh, there I, is. I've seen that one. Yeah, I've seen that. I mean, because that ship that was in the first three movies, we first see it in the motion right. picture. Then we see it in Star Trek Two. Then we see it in Star Trek Three. Except they lose the Enterprise. Right. I've always I've always questioned why they destroy the Enterprise. I mean, ultimately, the Enterprise is the star of the show. Ultimately. Right. But, right, I mean, you could have just... Oh, God, this Jim Kirk here we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but the step that I want to do, uh, one of the models I want to do, is, um, and I'm looking for, is the original 1978 Star Galactica. The original Galactica. Not this... Oh, okay. I'd like to find that yeah. one, too. Well, the kits out there for that, the old monogram kit and the old Revell kit are getting kind of rare, but, you know, um, Mobius Models is going to re-release that uh, model in a brand new mold here coming up pretty soon, maybe early next year or so. I'm not exactly sure what scale, but it's uh, for, from the it's early uh, information they're putting out. Scale. Okay. And from the early information like they're putting out, it's about the same size as their uh, BSG-75 uh, oh, yeah. Galactica that they've got out. Yeah. The original I mean, monogram kit spot 18 inches long. Yeah, I've been talking to a lot of friends of mine who do a lot of sci-fi, who do a lot of sci-fi models, and they say that the Battlestar would be their ultimate one to do, because we all grew up, we all grew up alive. I grew up with the original Battlestar like there, and ever since then I, I loved it. I was do. I always wanted to build the Viper and the Cylon Raider and everything like that. But then when I heard about the new one coming out, I took a look at the miniseries and I'm going, what the hell is this? This is not Battlestar. <laughs> well, I actually kind of enjoyed it. I watched the whole series too and I think uh, I think uh, uh, a lot of the original fans liked it. And, and then, of course, some didn't. You know, They were definitely different as far as the, uh, uh, the well, new one is definitely darker than the original show. But yeah. well, I still some, had a good I'll story and a lot of great space battles, of course. Oh, of course. it wouldn't be a sci-fi show without any. You know, what 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 would a sci -fi, what would a sci-fi movie be? Whether it be Star Trek, Star Wars, or Battlestar, and not any space battles. I mean, how boring would that be? <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. But. But well, you know they're going to release all of them. Uh, uh, they're they're upcoming uh, releasing the Viper Mark One. They've got uh, they've had some pictures of the uh, prototype Cy original Cylon Raider out there too. So they're doing all the kits. They've got the license for that. So I mean, I've been some nice stuff I've, coming out. I've been seeing like I'll, I'll check the check the web pages and everything like that, and I go, oh, that'll be a good one. But I have a little bit of uh, DVD. DVD porn here. I got this today. This is the full three season of the original series. What is two and three of the original series of Star Trek and this is region four down here. And I only paid for this five dollars for those entire series. Wow. What a oh. deal. Sweet. I know Amazon or somebody was having a huge sale on that stuff, like 60% off on the original series and some of the movies, uh, Blu-ray yeah. and DVD. So, yeah, that's a heck of a deal. So I, I thought I was not going to turn that down. No way. I mean, I love it. I mean, 
one has got both the original the thing I like about this it's got the enhanced version and the original version so you get a right. choice of being either enhanced or the original the way it was seen and I've watched both and I, I like the enhanced better I love the enhanced better but that's enough of my gas bag and get on the person eh boy okay well, it's glad to have you on again, Heath. No worries, Matt. All right, up next we've got Chris here. He doesn't have a web camera, but Chris, tell us a little bit about yourself and what your interests are and what you're working on. Well, my name's Chris. I'm from uh, South Carolina. I am one of the surprisingly many severely visually impaired modelers out there. And I'm currently working on the first pilot toss. I'm researching doing my first lit kit, which is going to be a 1 in 100 scale Zaku from Mobile Suit Gundam. Uh, I have pre just pre-ordered the Space 1999 Eagle. Very much looking forward to that. Oh yeah, yeah me too, buddy. And That's I've a also, fun one. Uh, Boyd and I were having a discussion about how modern cameras um, sometimes bleed out your LEDs and I just started researching on how to do something about that. I haven't come to any conclusions yet but I definitely am looking forward to figuring something out and getting back to y'all on that one. Yes, please do. <laughs> we want to we want to show everybody how our models really look when they're lit but it's awful hard to do that with these these high definition cameras. They just Make everything look like they're glowing neon or whatever. It's hard to show what it really looks like. Although the refit model you did, Boyd, looked all right. I mean, not at the final stage, that was all right. There was no real, uh, with the camera you used there, there was no real flare. I know. Yeah. It's the same camera. It's just, I guess, just certain light it, it likes and certain light it doesn't. It's, it's kind of a weird thing. Yeah. I've been trying to show uh, the work on the... Into Darkness Enterprise here, and every time I show that, it looks like a look like we're live on the Las Vegas Strip or something with all the neon going on. Did you? Um, <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a nice way of putting it, boy. It's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to ask you, boy. Did you try lowering the ISO on your camera? Did that have any effect? I know it's going to make it a little darker, but yeah. Well, actually, I, actually, I just shot my last update on the uh, on the Enterprise here, Chris, and uh, uh, it doesn't give you the ability to manually do it on my camera. It just has a couple of different default settings, and when I tried it, the video looks sort of green. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to be hearing people saying, "Hey, what happened to your camera? Everything turned green." Well, it did darken it down a little bit, but yeah, it gave a strange sort of a tint to it. So I'm I'm still working on that. I'll, I'll hopefully be able to get something figured out. Well, and I'll also, like I said, research it, and I'm going to borrow my mother's camera. Hers is a heck of a lot better than what I currently own. And, of course, I'm the one who had to teach her how to use it. And uh, I think you can has manual ISO settings, and I'll try it out and see what I can figure out. And I'll also check the, uh, the uh, fluorescent filters out, see if that has any cha any effect. Awesome, I appreciate it. All right, well, up next we've got Bradley here, and Bradley's out working in his shop. He's working on something. He hasn't said what it is yet. Must be top secret. <laughs> no, it's nothing terribly exciting. It's uh, I'm just getting doing some decal work on this uh, on this E. This is the 2500 scale one. Well, that's pretty exciting, if you ask me. I like that. Yeah. It looks really nice. It's just just a stock build, you know, nothing, nothing extra special. Um, I had to, I had to step away from my, my other kit, the robot from the Lost in Space. I'm actually having to do some repair work on this guy. Oh really? Oh yeah, I remember the last time you showed I, uh, us that. that that's a was trying to get my beautiful looking fit. model though, Bradley. It's, it's a, it's, it's pretty, it's turning out pretty well. I'm, I'm having some. Some issues on the final assembly, but uh, and then I had to do some disassembly work, which is never good once you get to this stage of the game. So, but yeah, this is uh, 
this E, and I've got you know all, basically all the all these guys. I have a B that, that I haven't done much with, but uh, I'm going to put them all on a display together. Probably traditional with oh, really nice. everybody else. That'll be a nice play all yeah. in scale. Now that's that's I that's all the 2500 Cadet series. Call those. It is. Yeah, that's all the Cadet series. Very nice. I'm not fancy enough to light these small ones yet, but uh, <laughs> you know maybe maybe another time around I can do that. Sure. Picked up this this guy while I was at Hobby Town picking up some some rods to put the display together, and. Uh, that's about it. As soon as I, I, I keep telling myself I've got to finish this robot before I move on to anything else big, and I've got uh, Battlestar Galactica and a Pegasus on on deck. Uh, Bradley, is that the robot? Oh, I half that then, Is that the robot from Lost in Space? Yeah, from uh, the movie version. Oh, the movie version. All right. Yeah, yes. yeah. The one, the one that had Joey from Friends in it. That was sort of hard to picture him in that role, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Captain West. Yeah. Um, I've been I've been helping my daughter with this this MPC X wing. So. Oh wow, that's nice. That's nice. She's uh, she's done. You know, a little R2 detail painting, and she put all the decals on and did all the all the base coat and everything on it. So that looks amazing. Well, that'll turn well, out pretty well. I know you mentioned that before, Bradley, and I think that's a wonderful thing that you're uh, you're having fun building models with your kids, and that's something that uh, that uh, is always nice. You know, teaching them about working with their hands and creating things using their imagination. It's it's a great hobby for them. Oh man. They learn a lot of good skills. Yeah. Skills that you can so, yeah. carry with you the rest of your life for a lot of different things. Yeah. So she's been she's been able to pick some stuff off the off the shelf and work on it. And I think uh, there's a there's a model show that's going to be in Cleveland next. Uh, or I want to say it's this coming November. I think we may enter a couple models in that. So that'll be cool. Very cool. Very cool. very cool. I was going to say skills like patience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. Trying very right hard to learn right now. This is why I don't. This is why I don't. This normally I do. Yeah, I normally don't do any models because it's, it's just too hard to try and look up. I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, luckily, luckily the smaller models are, you know. They're 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 right up a rally, and this one's only only really has two colors on it, so that's not too difficult to, to tackle. We're gonna do a uh, we'll do a weathering wash on this, so we can bring up the panel lines and stuff, and she'll she'll have to do all that too. Really nice. Has anybody ever built the Millennium Falcon? Star Wars? The Millennium Falcon? I have not. I've built a couple of them. I did a while ago. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out who it is. Some serious feedback I can go on there. Somebody's got a got a possessed internet connection. Yeah. <laughs> Not me, is it? No. No, you sound fine. Hey, yeah, well, welcome aboard there, Dave. Dave, introduce yeah. yourself and tell us what you're working on. I'm Dave Pashtag. I'm Wolf 359. At the exact moment, I'm working on nothing. It took me an hour to get in here. I was having computer problems. <laughs> but, uh, oh, okay. Right now, I'm working on a Katinga. Awesome. We got. You, can you give us a shot of it or are you over somewhere where you can't get to it? Oh, I can go bring it over here real quick. Yeah, we love we love eye candy here, man. <laughs> um, Boyd, I'm gonna sign off now and let some of your other subscribers come in. I'm gonna head on over to Team Space, Team Speak on Sci-Fi Model okay, Action. Okay, Jerry. I'll, I'll be talking to you later. And I'm gonna follow you. Great to have you on with us, Jerry. See you, Jerry. See you, Jerry. Take nice care, everyone.
Thank you. Happy modeling, guys. You too. And I'm going to follow him out so somebody else can get in here, and I'll talk at you guys later. All right, Chris. Okay, Chris. Thanks for stopping by. All right, y'all take care. Bye. Okay, Dave, what you got going on there? Hold her up there for us. Kind of froze up here. Can uh, you you're see still it? moving here. Yeah, I can okay. see it. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Okay, so you're you're installing the. Uh, you've Those. got some electronics going on in there. Tell us what yeah, you're doing there. Yeah, the Starling the Starling board, like you put in yours, where it piles your torpedoes with the audio board. I don't know if you can see it right now, but I got it in here somewhere. The audio board that sits in there makes the torpedo. There it is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Very sweet but setup. That's what I'm working on right now. B been a little bit. I had to uh, run to. Along really well. Ran to like um, Harbor Freight today, you know, my other toy store. Right. <laughs> and get a bunch of stuff. <laughs> that's a good place to find a lot of modeling tools. Oh yeah, for reasonable prices too. Oh yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much what I've been up to. So I'm gonna take leave. Um, I'm gonna as well as the other guys. I'm gonna let some of the other subscribers come in and have a bit of a yarn. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later, and I'll keep you updated with that model of mine I'm doing. Uh, and I'll talk to you later. But I look forward to seeing the next part of that JJ prize. I'm looking to seeing the end of that one. Okay, he. Well, it was great to have you on. In. Live long and prosper. <laughs> Happy <laughs> modeling, <laughs> See ya. Okay, we've got somebody new in here now, guys. Uh, we've got Eric in here with us. How are you doing today? Great, Eric. How are you? Okay. Let me know if um, there's any problem with the audio because uh, I'm in a Starbucks. Can I, I can hear you just fine, Eric. Okay. So, what's the topic today? Well, we're just we're just talking models, Eric. We've been going around uh, having everybody introduce themselves and show us a little bit about what they've been working on. Well, my name is Eric. I like to bash models, so or I like to consider myself an idea man. You broke a model, you got pieces of a model, you don't know what to do. I'm your main dad's what you do with it. Awesome. Um, I haven't built any models for myself in a while, but recently my, my mother told me I have a box of models at her house. I went over there, and they are some of my early projects. I was like about 12 years old. And I have to admit, I'm quite impressed with the ideas I made back then. Very cool. Now, do you have any particular interests, Eric? Are you mostly into sci-fi or just any kind of models? Sci-fi, airplanes, and ships, uh, modern warships. Awesome. Very cool. Oh, I should I just picked up a model of uh, the moon base of UFO. It's wow, modern. the old... Uh, that's got to be a pretty rare kit. Uh, no, I think the company that makes it just puts out, you know, a couple of thousand every few years. But uh, uh -huh. it's kind of like one of these little toy things, you know. They, they got this cranking part where they can roll up the window and stuff. I'm going to tweak it a little. Uh -huh. We got all that toy stuff and maybe build a subterranean base under it, which I think is very a lot cool. They show. Sounds very interesting. Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, of the original UFO, and you know uh, Jerry Anderson there did all the miniature work on that, and then he did several other shows like Space 1999, and right. I think he just recently passed away, but he was a miniature miniature making master. Amazing mm -hmm. how he could make that stuff look so. Yeah, about a year ago, I got really excited when I heard that uh, there was going to be a remake of the UFO as a movie. Oh, really? I haven't even heard about that. Yeah, hmm. I did, uh, saw a couple of the sketches of the Interceptors, Skydiver, the Submarine. I mean, everything was like, 
this is great. Can't wait. Yeah. It's been put on hold. Some of our younger people here might not even remember that show, but it was fantastic. I used to watch it like every week. I never missed an episode. Exactly. Great show. And I uh, usually catch it. Uh, watching some of the shows up on Google, just just to reminisce about things. Hey, Richard, how you awesome. doing? I'm doing good, Eric. How was your weekend, brother? Oh, it was great. Oh, I forgot to mention that. Captain Kirk over the weekend at my convention. It wasn't as big a wow. problem as I thought he was going to be, but, you know, but it was a great weekend all together at the Shore Leaf convention. Um, great. I got a few stars afterwards. Oh, Richard, you'll really love this. Yes, Man, it's happened. The guy who plays Fargo from uh, Eureka, he was there, had beers with him. And of course, William Shatton. So it was a uh, Canadian. Nice. So yeah. Good. That's what it looks like after you start signing up the lines. <laughs> Wow. Now you're coming along pretty good there. Now, exactly what are you using on that, Richard? Uh, what material using, are you using there? Uh, what, uh, what putty am I using on this one? Yeah. I Let use everybody know what you're using. I on the top, and I switched to red for the bottom. Um, okay. But I'm starting with a 400 grit to knock down the putty. Um, wet sanding, of course. And I'm just going slowly, section by section. I do my six or I do my four hundred to knock it down. I use my four or, pardon me, I use the four hundred to knock it down. I use the six hundred to smooth it out, and now it's uh, it'll be ready for paint uh, here when I do the circular lines. Really nice. So by Monday it'll have paint on it. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, we've got the else new that just popped in. That's uh, Ian. Am I saying that correct? Is it Ian? That is correct, sir. Can you nice see me? Nice to have you with us, Ian. Yeah, we can no, see, we you, can just see you just fine. Oh, we can see me? Oh, good. Um, well, I didn't think I'd be able to get in tonight, so I didn't have much with me. I'm actually dog-sitting at my boss's house, so um, my shop is kind of there. We kind of work on stuff together. Um, mostly what I have is prop stuff. That's what I've been mostly working on. I do models, but I've always been more of a prop guy. Uh, like here we got a cricket phaser from Next Gen. Check oh, really nice. Um, yeah, that looks It'll really be nice. hero. It'll have the power bar will light up. It'll have all sorts of cool phaser firing sounds. Wow, that um, actually works. Oh yeah, wow, awesome. It's kind of limited right now. I, there's going to be some better electronics, but um, if you take check out uh, GM Props. Um, he's the guy who does a lot of electronics, and then another guy called Stapleton Props. He's up in Fort Collins. I'm in Denver. Um, okay. Yeah. So if you guys are interested in props, definitely check those out. Like, uh, here is a uh, Endgame tricorder from the last episode of Voyager that I'm working on. I wish I wish I had wow, batteries. It would be great. so so much more impressive if the lights were working. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, look, it looks, a, looks pretty detailed, detailed anyway. anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's the nice thing is it's all put together. It's pretty much plug and play. Most of these, it's just finishing the bodywork, and um, mostly with the props, you use automotive paints anyway. But usually rattle cans, because that's all I can afford and am uh, <laughs> expertise with. Um, yeah, well, you can get those. A little bit of practice, you can get those to work very well anyway. Sure, definitely. And I noticed there's a lot of heat gun stuff involved because if you don't cure it, it just like stays smelly and a little sticky and it can get oh, yeah. damaged really easy if you don't cure it, especially if you don't clear coat it too. But the original props weren't clear coated, so that's kind of something where you're like, eh, do I want it to look exactly original screen used or do I want to keep it protected and, you know, idealized, I guess. Right. Right. It um, sounds like you're with a lot of enamels, then the enamels are a little slower to dry and stuff, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, um, I mean, I mostly use just, like, what's at AutoZone. I think it's Duplicolor, um, because uh -huh. I'm low budget. <laughs> but, um, I don't know what <laughs> else we got here. That? Exactly. Um, yeah. But I found, I found that models are much less expensive than props. I mean, this this right here is, like, 
two hundred dollars, one one hundred around that for the electronics, and then one fifty. Well, like three hundred once you get all the way done with it. It's ridiculous. I don't know where I get any money to spend on that. It's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> here, here we got a. I, I like to call it the animated phase pistol. It's like it's it's like a casting that came out. I assume right around the show came out when they didn't have a lot of good pictures, but it's not quite full size. It's kind of goofy. But oh, like, is that from uh, Enterprise? Uh, yeah. Yeah, the, um, I don't have all the parts with me right now, but it's you know obviously based off the phase pistol, but not quite because it's like it looks like if, if there was a comic book of Enterprise, this seems like what it would look like because they always get a little stylized. <laughs> yeah, here's the J.J. Abrams Enterprise phaser. <laughs> uh, what else we got here? Uh, this guy is kind of cool. This is a. Uh, there we go. Let's give back. There we go. This is a uh, Star Trek III tricorder, and uh, once it's done, it will pop up just like the original one. Oh, yeah, pop top. Blinkies oh, and all that yeah, fun yeah. stuff. A a state. State strap and all that. That's very, That's cool. very cool. Yeah, I love props. <laughs> I um, might have to hit you up for one of those. Well, my friend, uh, my friend Bill uh, in Kentucky, uh, his screen name's Sporak. If, if you guys haven't checked it out, it's called trekpropzone.com. And that's pretty much all Star Trek props. That's the obsessive, well, yeah, you can figure that out, <laughs> um, <laughs> ness of it all. Um, well, see, I, my random background is I originally, you know, did models as a kid, but then I just, like, I always wanted the toys of the props and stuff, you know, and costuming and all that. And it's like, the toys were cool, but, you know, you wanted, like, the real thing. So that's why I just kind of did over that. And then if I can do some hero worship... I started watching your builds, Void, and that got me back into models because I was just like, oh, that's how you do it. It's not that hard. <laughs> but then I started I'm doing glad, some of those I'm things. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm but glad then, to hear that. then the problem was, though, that I'm like, that I'd try to do it and be like, oh, wait, he's had like years and years of experience doing these things. Oh, well, I'll get there eventually. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you will. But yeah. um, let's see. We got a Dustbuster from Next Gen Season One. I, I, like I said, I oh, wish some of these great. were finished. They look so much better. Yeah. yeah here's one model. Is a Reliant that new 2500. I don't even know if you can see that. Can you see anything? Oh, we can, oh see we can see it. I can see oh, it. Oh yeah. 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 So almost done. Really it's a little crooked. That those little 2500 sets. Just keep making those. Do an NX01 with a Raptor and a Bird of Prey. Come on, that'd be great. I love that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's nice, nice to, have to have them all in scale, scale like that. that. Exactly. We can only hope, but it. Oh well. Let's see. What else? I don't know. I think that's all I got on the table. Here. Um, I also I, a shameless plug. Um, we have a show called the Young Collectors Club. Uh, Thursdays on iantique.com if you guys ever want to come by and join out. We also talk about this kind of stuff. So, um, we'd love to have you as a guest interview, Boyd. Okay. I was monitor. just going to say, uh, the, the, the word's a little scary to me, though, because I'm an old collector. Uh, <laughs> well, I think when, I, when we say young, it's more like, I don't know, young ideas. But I'm young at heart, so can I... Exactly. Okay? Exactly. Okay, good. Because if you're totally boring, then no one would watch you. But you're not. You're awesome. One, one last shameless plug. This also looks like nothing so far, but um, if you guys know like the Diamond Select toys, like the uh, they had that Rathacon phaser that came out a couple yes, years ago. Yes, yes. Um, uh -huh. Well, everybody keeps I wanting one of those. Yeah, exactly. They're so much fun. They have so much. Um, so many functions and stuff. So uh, I got it into my head that I wanted to... Everybody wants a Star Trek three phaser with all that. So what I've done here is I rewired it to have, like, the accurate LEDs from that phaser, and I got a couple of them in the garage. And should have, I thought I was on next, so I just grabbed whatever I could. But um, uh, basically, this just fits in there. And, like, the LEDs fit perfectly, like or the functions do. You just have to rewire them up. Like, this is the little status one right here and these are the little ones on the side and everything and so it all very interesting it all fits up perfectly so all they have to do is reprogram the sounds move the LEDs around they could they can make Star Trek 3 phasers it'd be awesome huh. but so cool. but yeah 
Like I said, I Ian, would have you are you now my new my best new friend. friend. <laughs> You're my new best friend. <laughs> I love Anytime, that stuff. Like I said, if you want to do a show, you let me know. I know you're in Texas, but we can Skype rate it or whatever. Or this. Okay. Totally. Um. Uh, <laughs> Ran out of steam. Yeah. Well, well, really nice, uh, nice presentation there, Ian, and really interesting stuff to share with us. We really appreciate it. Hey, anytime. Hey, check out my YouTube channel if you want to see all my props and stuff and stuff I've worked on. I have a little. Oh, I definitely video will. Show. I'll have to check that out too. I like the prop stuff too. So. Oh, me too. Yeah. yeah. So, there oh, goes my baby. Oh, damn it. Oh. But uh, one, one last thing I want to mention. I'm kind of hush hush about this, but you guys aren't as into the the prop thing. I just managed. So remember in Star Trek 09, the USS Kelvin, and they had the communicators that kind of looked like the original series ones. Yes. Well, I managed to snag one of those, at least production made ones, on eBay a couple weeks ago, and uh, we're gonna make some kits out of it, and it's gonna be really cool. So whenever you do another hangout, I'll have some stuff to show. Hopefully that'll be more more interesting than just me babbling. But no. Well, I don't think you babbled at all. You know, I think you were uh, very entertaining. I'm glad you came on with us tonight. Sounds good. Sounds good. I'm glad I made all it. All right, buddy. <laughs> well, we've got uh, Mr. Chadwick down on the end here. Time, you're you're uh, you're up next, Chad. Hey, I didn't even know I got in. <laughs> You're in, see, buddy. Good to see you guys. Good to see you too, Jack. I got confused kind of by the time. I wasn't sure if it was 9 or 10 or 8 or whatever. I guess um, I just can't do math very well with little clocks and stuff. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm central time here. Right, right. Which is, I believe, an hour behind Eastern, right? So I That's got all correct, messed, yeah. got all messed up. So, but I'm just working on the working on the Defiant tonight. So oh. same same Show build. What I've you been, got. Same build. I've been updating everybody. Um, right now, I'm pretty much just waiting on the. Uh, the DLM parts, I had to repaint. You know, this is the second time I've done this, so I stripped it all down and redid everything. So, that's yes, repainted all these, re glued them, put some more diffusion behind there. And oh, then, looks great. Uh, the light, yeah. yeah. And then, I mean, as far as the Defiant goes, I mean, I'm pretty much right about. Oh, there. we got some light show going on, folks. Wow, would you look at that? Oh, yeah. Wow, you've got grills and everything going on there. That's nice, Chad. Yeah, registry light, too. Yeah, so, what do you do to achieve that there at the top? Well, what I did was I kind of ripped off an idea from, I think it's Quirky on on the forums. Um, okay. Except I did a little bit of a different spin on it. I mean, I used I poked everything out there and used uh, some styrene tubing. Um, and then on the top, like I've seen that a lot of people say that the, the bridge is, ac is inaccurate that comes with the kit or just not as much detail. So I basically just uh, am doing that out of Abe's epoxy sculpt. So, oh, nice. Yeah. So you can't really see it right now because it's not light. Light, but, you know, obviously i got to paint over it because it's not light blocked and stuff. But So... Lighting's all done on that half. I'm just working on uh, gonna put uh, there's the, the other half right here. So I'm just gonna put the DLM parts in there and smash uh, nice. get to uh, get working on the scene. Looks like you're everything. using a little bit of uh, oil tape or something to do your light blocking in there, Chad. Yeah, yeah, a combination of. Uh, Combination of uh, foil tape, uh, plastic, and black tulip. Nice. So, tulipin over the fiber optics and stuff because I had a little bit of uh, fiber optics. Some of them were picking up a little bit of light. So, that's about it. Awesome. That's about, that's about you it mentioned. Uh, so. 
you had mentioned before, Chad, that you were doing some things to do some reinforcing in that in that model because it's kind of hollow, right? Right. You want to talk about that a little bit? Well, what I'm going to be doing is um, actually some people like to take the extra parts that look like this that come in the kit and kind of stick them in the middle to um, reinforce the, the cells, if you will. Right. Um, but what I'm what I did last time is I just put one big hunk of uh, Avi's epoxy sculpt in the middle. But what I'm going to do this time is I'm basically going to make um, little posts out of the, the epoxy sculpt and place them strategically throughout the place where I don't have any lighting and stuff like that. Um, it, that stuff usually takes about 36 to 48 hours to set up all the way. So I'll probably, uh -huh. put, my, put, I'll probably put those posts in place and then wait a day and then actually start putting the two halves together and clamping them and gluing them down. So that way they should be cured just enough to get a little bit of, you know, stretch and still push up and, uh, you know, have some uh, reinforcement. So, uh, that, that sounds like a great plan for that. Yeah, I let you well, you know, when you when you destroy a model the first time and you strip it down and start over, you learn a lot, I guess. So, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's yeah. been there and done that. Yeah. Yeah. Between that and watching everybody else's builds, you know, so um, but that's just another one of the common problems that everybody has with the model. So I guess my my biggest concern is um, you know, usually I know that everybody talks about the side of themselves here as far as having a big gap and maybe putting something in there to backfill it. Since this is the second time I've done this and I've sanded the, the edges down quite a bit, I'm kind of concerned that I'm going to have a big gap like almost all the way around now. So I'm kind of thinking about maybe tinkering with and putting epoxy sculpt all the way around and using that to smash down and then cut it out. But I don't know if it'll harden up good enough to keep two halves of plastic together. You know, kind of using it as kind of like a super slow setting epoxy. But I just don't know if it'll grab, you know. Uh-huh. Because you can really just, you know, I, I pulled it out of here really easily last time, so... So I don't know. I guess we'll just have to see what happens. You know, I've been. Yeah. Um, you know, I got. Uh, I can always go uh, and move it up to the uh, the different kind of bondo, the two part, which you know is a little bit thicker and stuff like that. So I'm mm. definitely probably going to be using that versus anything else. And then I'll finish it off with some plastic putty or Mr. Surfs or one or the other. Okay. So, well, that yeah. sounds really good. That's where I know I'm a lot of. The, I know that that darn defiant kit's getting awful hard to find out there. So if round two's listening, everybody, we all got to say we want a new. We want a new defiant kit. Repop that sucker. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's just ridiculous what they're selling for on eBay and stuff. So that, that's one that is, seems to be really popular too. Yeah, you really gotta I, you gotta really do what I and I did with mine is you just gotta you just gotta watch like everyone that's on there and hopefully you can sneak in there. But yeah. pretty much everybody's trying. The last time I looked, it's just all buy it nows for fifty, sixty, seventy bucks. You know. Oh People yeah, yeah that, exactly. Nobody wants to do auctions on eBay anymore. It's just ridiculous. Oh, yeah. So. so, Chad, what are your plans for uh, doing the finish on the model? Are you going to be using decals for all those detailed panels, or are you going to paint those on? You know, as, as bad as I really want to paint everything, that was like one of the biggest problems before. And obviously, obviously I've learned a lot about surface prep and stuff like that since last time. But being that it's already had a ton on it, and I mean, I cleaned it all down with uh, Simple Green and everything. Um, I'm using Bulldog uh, because I couldn't find your plastic except for, I believe, in a quart for 90 bucks. Wow. Yeah, at my local car. Well, uh, Chad, have a look around at your local uh, car supply places like your Auto Zones, your Napa's, wherever you have. Duplicolor also makes that adhesion promoter in a spray can. 
I've used that before, and um, I don't know. Like I've, I feel like lately I've kind of got burned on a couple of the Duplicolor products. So, oh, is that right? Yeah, like their primer. I got a couple bad cans of it. Um, the old primer, but they make. Uh, well, let me see if I can find it here. This perfect match primer, though, is definitely a lot better than the other one. This is the one that I. This is the dupe color that I've got some bad cans of. This can right here is like pretty yeah. bad. So. I have the same stuff uh, sitting on my shelf over here, Chad, and I'm about ready to throw away. That stuff is no good. Yeah, but uh, this perfect match, I used the dupe color, and it was pretty nice. But you know, I've gotten so much better at uh, and stuff, you know, that I can pretty much get away with just using, you know, like to me a spray can and stuff like that now. So. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty much what I've been using. So that and the bulldog for the adhesion. And, uh, the, the bulldog, the bulldog will leave a little bit of a texture on there, but you can you can sand that and clean it up a little bit before you apply your uh, your primer. You can apply your primer and sand that smooth too, anyway. So you can get rid of it. Not too bad of a texture. Oh, so you sand your bulldog, or or you sand yeah, you plastic can. too? Yeah, you can sand it. You can lightly scuff it. Yeah, you don't want to use like really harsh paper on it, but you can lightly scuff it up. Right. Get rid of it. Now the plastic. The reason I like that is that it doesn't leave any texture. It's sp it sprays on just like a clear coat. Yeah, it's just and where so the, the bulldog hard will hard. leave a little bit of a texture. It's just almost impossible to find that in an aerosol can anymore. I don't know what the deal is with that stuff. Have you actually went looking for it lately? Well, uh, the local, uh, the, the place where I buy, you know, I'm in the automotive painting business yeah. anyway, in a little shop downtown. It's a Gladwin paint store, and uh, they carry it there. It's always on the shelf. Oh, man, that's nice. So, yeah. Yeah, I went to, you're not going to uh, you're not going to find DuPont products at your like Napa's and your Auto Zones. It's going to be more of the regular body shop or body shop auto paint specific stores are going to be the ones that carry that. CarQuest is where I went and they sell the whole line. They have the, the they have the um you know that uh the, that plastic stuff has like a certain model number line, you know, and they have the plastic preparer they have everything except for the actual aerosol can. Like I said, wow. they have it in a quart, but it's ninety bucks. Right. Holy <coughs> smokes! Yeah, that's, so, that's a lot. That's stiff. Definitely gonna have. Yeah. Look for something less expensive than that. Yeah. And I know you said your little aerosol can lasted forever. It almost seems like a quart of an airbrush. Oh, it forever. does. Yeah. I, I've got a can of it here. Let me. I can't remember the size. Uh, what size it is here? It's a uh, it's a 14 ounce can, and um, this is what we're talking about, everybody. In case you guys haven't heard of this one before. Hey, boy! Is there any way that you can decant that and run that as a cosmic color paint or something? <laughs> well, I'd have to I'd have to buy it in a quart size. So I can do it that way, Chad. It'd probably be easier. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't but, know. Uh, uh, I didn't know how that stuff is out of the can. If you've ever tried, uh, I mean, you probably have never had a reason to put it in there, brush or anything. So. No, I mean it sprays just fine out of the can, and, and the reason it lasts me so long is that you just you just need to put a very light coat on your stuff. You don't need to cover it, you know, put it on heavy like you do primer or anything like that. It just needs a really light dusting down, and that's pretty much it. Right. That's after you wash all the parts and everything first, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, well, okay, going around the room, guys, does anybody have any specific questions they wanted to ask of anybody here or anything like that? Uh, I was glad, actually, that you used that the plastic because uh, I've seen you use that a lot, Boyd, and uh, like like Chad there, I, I, I can't see the kind of anymore here in Pittsburgh, so, um, you know, I, <laughs> we, ought to, we ought to write the company and uh, tell them there's a market for it for the modelers. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, uh I was just—I just mentioned that the uh, Duplicolor, because that seems to be fairly readily available or readily available. 
And uh, uh, quite a few of the guys from over at Sci Fi Model Action and some of the other places have been using it, and they're saying that it works really, really good. I, I haven't it. tried any yet. Okay, Dave, Dave's been using it, yeah. and they're saying it, it doesn't lay down much of a texture either. It, it sprays on pretty smooth, so that might be a good alternative and might be a lot more uh, readily available too. Because they carry Duplicolor like at AutoZone and all those places, you know. So yeah, they have it everywhere. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Because that, that was that's gonna be helpful for me. Yeah, I highly recommend it. I mean, I it, it, some people might think it's overkill, but if you're gonna be doing any um, any kind of uh, uh, you know, if you're gonna paint, and then you're gonna do any kind of masking over it and and painting different colors and pulling tape and things like that. You definitely want to have that on there. Uh, oh, it, d it definitely makes it spray a lot easier when you spray it, too. It just covers real easy when you use that adhesive promoter and then a good primer. So, Right. It'll just keep you from, you know, I haven't had hardly any problems with my models at all pulling off paint or anything like that. So it does make a difference. Yeah, that, I've seen you on some of your videos. It's pretty amazing. And uh, I know I've had problems where I've painted something and, pull the tape off and I gotta go back and touch it up. <laughs> yeah. That's always a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Hey, oh, I have cool a question off. for you. Be okay, cool. Eric the, Scott. Uh well it looks like you got quite a quite a bit of models back there behind <laughs> you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have about twelve hundred models. Oh yeah. Wow. Three different places now. How do you keep track of your models? <laughs> That's a good question. I, I I don't really even know, Eric. I'll, I'll just put them all on the shelf there, and uh, they just kind of sit there until I get around to building them. Yeah. But I do lose track of what I have. I've got another closet inside the house that's full of them, too. But you can never have too many yeah. models, man. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, because one of the things um, I was running out uh, Base uh, took them all out of the box, zip box bags, and then I took those bags and put them in um, brown brown boxes, all the same size. So I put them in a storage locker, and I just totally uh -huh. forgot some of the things I have. I know most of it, but uh, I came across one or two, and I just totally surprised what I had. Like I realized oh, I had um, three vo um, three of the Enterprise C. And one was a clear version of it. Yeah, that would be the uh, AMT Pro Modeler version that they came out with, with a few years ago, I think. Yeah, that one's a pretty rare kit now. That one's nice for lighting. Yeah, the Yagashi or something like that? Yamaguchi. Yep. Yamaguchi, okay. Whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Eric, it sounds like you need like a uh, some kind of computer program or something to keep track of all them models and put them all on file. Man, that's a lot of models. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. I found one that was in a fine scale modeler magazine. Looks like it's going to do the trick. But I was just wondering, has anybody else really used it? Because Sue database or something like model kit database. Mm, no, I haven't heard of that one. Mm -hmm. so, what was that, Mark? You probably use it uh, like Excel to keep track of it. You use database to the Excel. You know? Uh-huh. And it should keep track of all the models. Mm-hmm. You get rid of that'll one take some time to. Well, yeah, that'll take some time to enter. Your computer models, programs that. can only do what you enter in, right? So you're gonna have to enter right. them all in. <laughs> that'll yeah. that'll be a chore in itself. <laughs> all right, guys. I think I'm gonna split. Um, it was nice uh, hanging with you guys. Okay. All right. Okay. You all have a good night. Good, good night, Jack. Nice to see you there. again. Thanks You'll see more of the uh, of Boy for sure. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely looking forward to that. It's right. looking great. I'm uh, hogging out the uh, uh, um, impulse engine so I can light them. So this will be interesting. Excellent. All right, see ya. See ya. Okay, take it easy. So, so I know there used to be. Um,
some programs that allowed you to catalog CDs and DVDs. I wonder if there's, and it would it would pull information from into the database from like Amazon.com and stuff like that. I wonder if there's something similar like that for uh, pulling that same type of data from model kits. And that's oh, really yeah, what you need. You need is. the data already there that you can pull in. Right. Otherwise, yeah, you're not going to yeah. do it because it takes too long to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why I haven't done it. <laughs> if most of them had barcodes, you could do it that way. Right. Scan them in. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Dave, you're always thinking of clever stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's just part of what I do. Well, I had on you guys what I've been. Well, most of you already know, but here's the uh, here's the old uh, Antarctis Enterprise. Ah. I'm moving along pretty good on it. I've got uh, all I've got left to do now is do the uh, Azteking on the um, on the engine nacelles, and then put the deflector dish on it and finish up the base and a couple more markings, and I'm done with this this little guy. I've been enjoying the build. It's a fun little model. Looks great, man. It's uh, yeah, better than good. it's a it's a better kit than I thought it was when I started on it. When I first did the review on it, I was worried it was going to be pretty flimsy. But when you get it all put together, it's actually pretty sturdy. Nice. Not too bad. Mm -hmm. So no it's issues with I, uh, with where the where the neck is and that kind of stuff. That wasn't too wasn't too thin. No, no, it's uh it's been fine. I brought something else out here tonight. I want to show you guys. It's not really um. Uh, sci-fi related but a model that I worked on a while back somebody asked me the other night what was my longest what was the longest amount of time I ever spent building a model and this is this is it and I'll kinda show it to you here let me get the uh, enterprise out of the way here this is uh kind of a favorite subject of mine anyway I'm a I've always enjoyed uh, ship models and things like that but uh, this is my um, kick the light down here so you can maybe see it a little bit better my battleship Yamato you're done already <laughs> well, it's about as big as a battleship I don't know if you guys can see this here this is my uh, Academy uh, Titanic Wow, oh, wow. Yeah. we're just I don't know if you guys can see, but I did all rigging and everything on this bad boy, all the cables and everything. That's what took the most time on it, but it's got all the photo etch parts and that is nice. So you're not just a sci-fi guy. No, and this model, um, I don't know if you can see it very well here, but it's lit. The whole model has uh, got lighting in it. Oh, wow. Let me uh, walk over here and turn this other light off, and I'll get you a better shot of that so you can see it. It looks pretty cool in the dark. Hey, there's my power supply. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get. I love that dang thing. I do too. Okay, let me turn my... the light down here for you. Oh, now my... maybe you can see it. Oh yeah. Oh, that's gorgeous, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, it took me about a year of working on it off and on to build that thing, and I sure had a lot of fun with it. I'd like to build a 350 scale version of it, but uh, maybe one day. Get my camera back in place here for you guys. Hang on a second. So, Boyd, did you say already, but what, what scale is that kit? Um, man, I think it's a one five hundred scale. It's about, it's about twenty five or twenty six inches long. The three fifty is like way over three feet long, closer to four feet long. Wow. Yeah, it has. I mean, it had it had something like over a thousand parts to it, and it's a. Uh, you're painting and painting and painting. I mean, all your little details and everything, and. You know, the little anchor chains, and I mean, it's got tons of detail on it. It was a lot of fun. I built it about, man, probably close to 10 years ago. I like ships too, but I like the, like, cutty shark. 
Yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to build yet. some military ships eventually. I've my local hobby shop here. I've had my eye on a nice 350 scale Bismarck battleship that they have, a Tamiya. It's a beautiful model kit, but hmm. I don't know when I'd ever get around to getting a chance to build it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the um, um, working on this space battleship you model kit. That's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, that's the one with the remote control and everything, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's quite a beast. That looks like... I can't wait to watch you start it. Yeah. Well, I'll be doing a review on it here in the next couple of days, taking everything out of the box, and uh, I'm curious to see what they've got for the, you know, for the motor setup and everything in there, how they make the guns and everything operate. So, right, that'll be pretty cool. Yeah, you got me watching those movies now. Oh, the uh, yeah. Have you seen the the 2010? That's movie, uh, Live action movie version? Yeah, I found it on. Uh, oh, geez. Crunchyroll or Daily Motion or something like that. So it's I've on, watched it. It's on like, YouTube, too. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's on YouTube, Chad, YouTube. in HD. You can watch it in HD on YouTube. Well, all right. Well, I'll have to look again because the, the three YouTube links that I found weren't, uh, weren't subtitled. So. Uh. Like if you just do a straight Google search for it, it brings up three links, and none of them were subtitled. So I'll have to dig okay. a little deeper. You know when you well the one that I was watching on YouTube, Chad. When you watch it, you have to ha you have to hit the CC button on the uh, on the YouTube player, the closed caption button, and then the, and then the subtitles come up. Ah well, uh, you know that I was trying to watch it on my Apple TV. So ah. that is probably why I couldn't find anything like that. So yeah. I'll have to try streaming it from my iPad, then airplaying it, and I bet I can uh, turn it on then. Yeah. I have to say I didn't know much about the whole, but apparently it has a huge following of people out there, and uh, I didn't know much about it, but after seeing the movie, I think it's really, really cool. I really enjoyed it. Videos I've watched of it looks cool. Yeah, I mean, how can you not love epic space battles and yeah? Yeah, I saw, I saw some uh, reviews that uh, people kind of compared it to the uh, reboot of Galactica. That it's kind of got the same feel right. to it. It does, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Really, yeah. So that, that I gotta, I'll have to sneak when that they, in on the TV schedule. Yeah. They have uh, very similar space battles, you know. And they la the, the ship carries, of course, some uh, smaller uh, fighter type ship, you know, that they launch, and just like they do from Galactica and all that. So yeah, it's very similar. Cool. The ship's captain is very uh, similar to, you know, Adama and all that. So. Oh, there's only one Adama now. Boy. Right. Lauren <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> <born> Green. Lauren <laughs> Green. Yep. The original. There's only one of Dom, and it's Lauren Green. Oh, yeah. Way to go, dude. All right. Well, guys, we're, we're about two hours in here, so I think I'm going to – we'll call it a day. I appreciate everybody showing up. Well, we got somebody with a helmet on there. Oh, that's me. <laughs> I thought I heard somebody with a style on radio voice. Extermination. <laughs> I found a couple more fun things in the garage. Oh, that's, oh, that's cool, cool, Ian. This yeah. is uh, Captain Rex from the Clone Wars. It was kind of a client build. It's a full oh, right. costume. Oh, nice. But, uh, oh, yeah, that's nice. Then he got his pistol. Very good. <laughs> oh, wow. Hold and it up and look at the light there, Ian. get this in the shot. But Couldn't see that pistol very well. It was kind of... Oh, okay, one well, second. Okay. This you might hopefully be able to see. Holy oh, smokes! What is that? A bazooka? Well, this is the the in Star Wars, you know, Episode Two. The clones had those like big long rifles. Right. 
Well, this is a scratch built version of that. Man, Man that's a heck of a, a, heck of a, heck of a prop there. You made that yourself? Yeah, it was kind of a team effort between me and my boss, but he, he bought all the stuff and I put it together. Wow, that's wow. awesome. Wow. But yeah, that, that was I would, fun. I was just watching a video earlier today with uh, Adam Savage where he was building the uh, Han Solo plas uh, plastic drop. Oh, really? Out of the, isn't it a Mauser? Or yeah, a, and they they, they went to like they went, they went to extreme, extreme lengths to make sure they get all the right, right stuff and everything, everything like a perfect, like a perfect replica of it. It's on YouTube. Huh? What's well, your what's your, your website? Check out. Check out um, well, my, I don't really have a website, but my YouTube channel is. Uh, I'll just type it in the chat. It's probably easier because every time I say it, nobody knows what I'm saying, but I put it in the chat there. Okay, okay appreciate, appreciate it. it. And then I have a photo bucket that's under this name. There we go. And then one last thing that is model related that I thought I'd show off. Uh, do you guys remember um, the graveyard in Wolf 359? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, this is, quote, studio scale, uh, the Cheyenne class model that I'm working on. And uh, oh, that looks because great. the real and I mean but why by, by quote I mean that the real model is actually made out of um the twenty five hundred scale Enterprise D model kits and like a couple highlighters for the engines. Okay. So you, you can go check it out on that uh X Asterisk Scientia website. If you guys know know that one, I can type it in here. It's got really good Trek articles and stuff. I always spell it wrong, but something like that. But uh, there's a really cool kit on Starship Modeler where all you need is the two halves of the, or two bottom halves of the uh, 2500D kit, and then the bridge module and escape pod from the uh, 1400 scale. But then it's this 3D printed extra pieces that have the highlighters. It's obviously not done themselves or in halves, but they, it comes with clear pieces for the inside and then tops, because they really were just highlighters and then this, these pieces were scratch built, but um, um, well, I guess you kind of need the backs from the tops of them, but um, but that's pretty much all they were for this this ship. Very was. And it's cool. Just, it's like, you know, this big on screen floating in the background. Yeah. And I'm like, I have to have that model. Yeah, there's one missing right now. <laughs> It's always it's always, it's always cool, cool to see uh, models, uh, models of some of the some different, of the different class, class ships that we don't get to see very often. I know, right? Well, I was working on a uh, Yamaguchi, which was supposed to be Excalibur from the... I don't know if anybody reads any of the books. I kind of got into the New Frontier series, and they have the USS Excalibur, which is one of those ambassador refits with like the little cowlings on it and stuff. But they sent me the wrong decals. They sent me a Delphi instead of Excalibur, so I'm like... Oh. And apparently PNT Graphics hasn't been, like, sending them stuff, so we'll see. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Um, okay. Well, if you ever if you ever need any kind of um, custom decals made, Ian, you can... Jerry that was just on here, he's over at Sci-Fi Model Action. He does that. Oh, cool. Might have yeah, to uh, hit him up for that. And he does yeah, a great job. Really nice yeah. stuff, yeah. Yeah, he does some really good stuff. Are they... Are, did, well, has anybody ever got the, um, see, now I can't remember what it is. It was for a little 2500 scale, like, FASA ship. It was the destroyer with the two engines, like the support destroyer. I think it's called a Kula class. I got uh -huh. some, like, wallpaper uh -huh. decals for those, but as soon as I took the one of the Aztecs off and put it in water, it just shredded, and it didn't say... This was before I really knew what I was doing, but it was it didn't say anything about like coating it with de testers decal bonder or anything, which I was like, shouldn't you at least tell people you're not going to do that or what? It, it just like just that sounds it like it might have been. Yeah, there's been some different issues with different uh, decal suppliers out there who I won't mention, but uh, <laughs> yeah. We don't want to get anybody in trouble or start any flame wars here. <laughs> well, in one in one instance, I I. I I forgot what I was going to say. I, uh, I'm i trying that orbital dry dock when I do my End of Darkness refit. And, oh, have you guys seen the uh, the photo etch that's coming out for that? 
No, I have no, not. I have not. And I'm just, I, 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 I heard about it now that I'm just about done building mine. Of course, right. Of course. And it's got yeah. the little fan blades and everything. It's like, I'm, see, I kind of wait for you to finish yours, and then I know how to build mine, so, so I was like, <laughs> oh, good. Don't we all? Yo, yeah, I was going to well, say, we all do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was going to mention on the on the decals, Ian, uh, Jerry uses really quality uh, decals that, that aren't going to come apart on you, nice. when you when you use them, require any coating on them or anything like that. There's an example right here, Ian. He's, uh, this is the decal he created for the 1 1,000th uh, refill. Oh, the shuttle bay? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's, He's it's also like reviewing a, uh, the strong backs for the 350. I got some of those. Whoa. Yeah. That's the same ones that I used on my uh, 350 refit that I built. Really? Those are sweet. Yeah. yeah. Might have to, uh, if I ever get to mine in this lifetime, I'm going to pick some of those up. <laughs> yeah, I have Jerry one. is the man on the decals. Didn't, yeah. didn't he do your base also for that Katinga, or was that somebody else? Well, that's a combination. Dave right here actually Me? built the base uh, and the sounds and everything, and uh, Jerry provided the backlit uh, print that I put on the top. Oh, gotcha. Awesome. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. They do good work. Anybody looking for a custom base, those guys are the place to go. Sure, definitely. Well, I always wanted to do one where, like, it was like an L cars panel, like the you know the buttons like on the computer screen and next gen computer screen. But then each, like, it was set up where each button activated a feature, and like you know, running lights, warp lights, whatever. But everything was its own little thing, and you could, like, it had sound effects. You could power it up, set it to red alert, and all that stuff. These are my far out ideas of taking it to the next level. Yeah, yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah. yeah. They're not far out. Well, it's kind of what I'm doing with, with this guy, too, the Maquis Raider. Has anybody ever done one? I've never seen anybody do one of these. And they're always, like, for 15 bucks online. Nobody seems to want them. Yeah, that and the uh, torpedo ship. Yeah, the other. There's a couple oh, out there the that you see quite often for uh, really cheap. Yeah. I know. Why? It was in one shot in the entire series, that Kazon torpedo. One shot, and they made yeah. a model kit of it. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Well, I like the um, Kazon torpedo just because it's great parts to use on another ship. That's true. I've seen it kit bashed all over the place. Good kit bashing kit. Yeah. But I mean, that's right up there with the head. Star, Star Wars um, model shadows of the something. Oh, the Virago? Yes. That, that black one with the wing foldy things. Right. Those I'm using I'm things. using those I'm using those engines for my uh, my Kid Bash Pocket Battle Star. Hmm. Basically, uh, like when World War II came along, they couldn't put out full-size carriers, so they made little um, small jeep carriers. Jeep carriers, pocket yep. carriers. Huh. So that's basically what this is, a pocket battle stuff. And I'm using um, the bottom of the runabout star trap for the form and some 40-millimeter um, any aircraft can, 700 scale, and a couple other this and that put it together. And it's looking good. It's looking good as far as the pieces go. I just got to put it together and paint it. Maybe some lights. Awesome. Well, all right, everybody. We're, we're two hours in here, so I'm going to have to shut things down. I'm probably going to be... Uh, Doing one of these probably regularly every uh, Saturday night, so you guys are all welcome to come on back. I'll make put out the invitation for it during the week sometime, and uh, I appreciate all you guys coming and everything you showed us tonight. Had a lot of fun, especially those props. I like those. Yeah, man. Everybody, anytime you can stop the show. Oh, so at, at my house, I have two bookcases filled with props. So, <laughs> well, bring them next time and show them to us. Oh, Ian. I will. 
Well, the only yeah. thing I'm okay, guys. doing a musical, so hopefully I can still make them. That's going to be doing this fall, so. But okay. See you soon, okay, guys. All right. Take care, everybody, All right. and thanks again. All right, thanks. See ya. Bye. Bye.